So we have water vapor at 6 megapascal and 500 degrees C enters an insulated turbine. So let's go ahead and just put a box for a turbine. And we have the flow coming in. And you can put the flow going out. And the purpose of the turbine is to generate some power. So some W dot going out of the control volume surrounding the turbine. There's our control volume. OK, so the steam, it's H2O. It comes in at a pressure of 6 MPa and a temperature of 500 degrees C. It's a well-insulated turbine, so maybe I do this. I put some hash marks like that, and then I say Q dot is equal to 0. It's well-insulated. Q dot is equal to 0. And it expands to saturated vapor, so at state 2, it's... Um, it, it, the pressure is uh, 0 0.3 megapascal, and it's saturated vapor, or the quality is 1 at state 2. The quality is 1 at state 2, right? Isn't that saturated vapor? The effects of motion and gravity can be neglected, so forget changes in kinetic and potential energy. The dead state temperature and pressure are specified. First question. Determine the work developed in these units of kilojoules per kilogram. What's the strategy for develop turn to, first of all, what symbol should I be looking to calculate for this work developed? Is it W dot divided by M dot or lowercase W? Is that what I'm looking for? And if you want to put a CV on that W, go ahead. Is that what I'm looking to calculate? Yes? Give me a little feedback. Thumbs up if you agree. All right. I'll press forward. But um, OK, so how would I look to calculate this quantity? What's the strategy? Right, but uh, what equation do I want to write? In, what's, in words, what is that equation a statement of? I want to write the first law of thermodynamics for an open system with one inlet, one outlet, steady state, blah, 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 all those. Okay. So I want to go back to the equation I just had and say, let's apply it for the energy balance only, not exergy, just energy balance. And so you'll say it's steady state, uh, it's, it's no heat transfer, you've got the power going out, the shaft, that's the purpose of the turbine. I could put a CV on there, maybe I just get rid of the CV on there, good. And then we're going to have the mass flow rate bringing in enthalpy, taking out enthalpy. Is there any other terms that I need on the energy balance? Looks good. So this equation is W dot over M dot is equal to enthalpy change. That's it. True. So we can go to the tables and we can get H1 and we can get H2. True. Using those two pieces of information, I think we can get H1 and H2. True? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to conserve a little space, and I'm going to tell you I was able to get H1 and H2, and then I was able to calculate W dot. Over M dot is uh, 697 kilojoules per kilogram. Did we need to know anything to solve for part A out of Thermo 2, or is that just a good review of Thermo 1? Just a good review of Thermo 1. Now let's take a look at part B. What is the entropy generation in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin? What symbol should I use for what I'm asked to calculate for part B? Just like this was the symbol for part A, what should I use? Is it sigma dot divided by m dot? It is. It is. It's what I need. What's the strategy to solve for part B? Do a second law analysis for the control volume surrounding the turbine. It's steady state, blah, blah, blah. So it's steady state, second law, is equal to, you have a, a Q dot divided by TB, but you know what? It's 
no heat transfer across the boundary. So if there was a heat transfer, it would be sweeping along with it some property known as entropy, but it's not in this case. Um, and then we continue the equation. We have the mass flow rate coming in, bringing with it entropy 1, going out with entropy 2, and then we have some entropy generation. Did I write the second law correctly? Good. So now we find sigma dot divided by m dot, what we're asked to solve, is equal to S2 minus S1. I know that I've got, be careful on those subscripts, but I think it's correct, S2 minus S1. Do you agree? So you look up the property S1, and you look up the property S2, and you substitute in, and you find sigma dot divided by m dot numerically will be 0 0.1116 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Answer to part B. Nothing needing anything from thermo 2. All earlier material. Now we get to what is the exergy destruction. Okay? Exergy destruction. And look at the units, kilojoules per kilogram. So what are they asking me to solve for? How about E dot D, exergy destruction, divided by M dot? Does that look good? Okay, now, how do you want to calculate this unknown quantity? Okay, what I'll do is I'll try and describe the equation in words, the concepts behind the equation, and then recall the equation and use it, just like what we're doing. Energy balance, and then we said, here it is, the equation with enthalpies. Entropy balance, second law, here's the equation. So what we say is exergy is going to be destroyed when irreversibilities are present, when entropy is generated. So there is a relationship between entropy generation and exergy destruction. That's what I'm going to use, that relationship, that E dot D is equal to uh, T naught times sigma dot. True? Hmm, I need M dot in this equation. Divide M dot on both sides. And now I see that, hey, it's just going to be this T naught, which is uh, for this problem 298 Kelvin, times the answer to part B. And so when you calculate that, E dot D divided by M dot, you find that it's a whopping 33.3 .3 kilojoules per kilogram. What does it mean that you have a positive exergy destruction and a not a negative? What would happen? What would it mean if there was a negative 33? That would be exergy. Look for your error. Or the error in the problem statement because something's wrong. It's impossible. You violated a law of thermodynamics if you have a negative. It's just like having that exergy generation term to be negative. I mean, the entropy generation. Okay. Now, uh, what's another way to go about this problem? Go back to the, uh, um, the exergy balance. Start with 0 is equal to E dot Q minus E dot W plus M dot E F1 minus E F2 minus E dot D. True? What about the heat transfer? Nothing. You would go back to an exergy balance equation. Okay. Uh, this is 100% of W dot. It's 100%. What went out the shaft in rotating power is perfect exergy transfer. It's one to one. It's 100%. It's already in the form that we want it in. It's in useful work. And then we have now... Uh, uh, you, you can solve for this equation, so you have E dot D divided by M dot is equal to W dot divided by M dot um, with the minus sign plus M dot E F1 minus E F2. True? Yeah, I'm sorry? Yeah, that will go away. 
that's the right, it goes away. So the EF2, EF1 minus EF2 is the H1 minus H2 minus T0 S1 minus S2 for the expansion of that. But what did we have for this minus W dot over M dot? Wasn't that H1 minus H2 plus H1 minus H2 minus T0 S1 minus S2? Guess what cancels? And you're left with a, a minus, well, or put a plus there, T0 times S2 minus S1. I'm switching the order from 1 to 2 to 2 to 1 to get rid of that minus sign. And then you'll say, look, it from the second law, <laughs> that's just T0 times sigma dot over M dot. Basically, you're, you're sh I'm showing that things are consistent 